Welcome to part two of Laser Treatment of Narrow Angles. I'm Dr. Mahucci from the Eye Clinic of Florida. The eye is a ball filled with fluid. The eye makes and drains its own fluid called aqueous. Normally, the fluid is made behind the iris and flows out through the pupil and then on through a structure called the angle into the drainage mechanism of the eye. The angle is formed and seen here by the two lighted lines created by our slit lamp microscope. The line on the left is the cornea and the line on the right is the iris. As you look up the picture, you'll see the lines coming together to form an angle. Narrow angle is when these two lines are abnormally close. This happens when the eye is relatively small or farsighted and the structures are compressed to fit into a smaller space. It can also happen when the lens or cataract is large and blocks the flow of fluid out through the pupil. This causes the fluid to collect behind the iris and push it forward like a sail. When the iris is pushed forward toward the cornea, the angle gets narrower and can even close, blocking the path of fluid out of the eye. At some point, the mechanism that drains the fluid can be so blocked that the pressure rises dramatically. This is called angle closure glaucoma. It isn't the most common kind of glaucoma, but it can be painful and leave the eye permanently damaged. This is a video of an eye with narrow angle. As you can see, the distance between the iris and the cornea is relatively small. The treatment for narrow angle has been around for decades. A small hole in the thin part of the peripheral iris can act as a safety valve and let fluid escape from the back to the front of the eye in the event that its path is blocked at the pupil. The procedure was done surgically in the operating room during the early part of the last century, but it's now mostly done as an outpatient procedure. Here you can see us focusing on uh, one of the thin parts of the peripheral iris, and there the laser uh, is fired, and the laser acts kind of to pop a small hole into the iris. It, uh, the eye is numb, so the patient really can't feel this very much, and you can see very clearly here, uh, once the hole is made, fluid uh, moves from the back to the front, and we'll see a magnified uh, view of this here in a second, but here you can see as the iris, uh, as the hole is made, fluid flows from the back now to the front, and the reason it flows so rapidly like that is because it was blocked. So here's another eye uh, with narrow angle, and this is the, the movie of that eye that we just saw the still photograph of, and the laser's focused on the peripheral iris, and a couple of uh, quick laser uh, bursts uh, are done to uh, pop a hole in this uh, thin part of the iris. Another way this is done is with argon laser. Uh, some doctors use argon laser because it's more convenient or it's in their office. It does take longer to do. The argon uh, basically creates tiny little burns, as you can see here, um, and doesn't pop through the iris as easily. It's useful if the iris is very thick. Um, and sometimes can be used to thin or tighten up the iris uh, before using the la YAG laser, which can uh, pop a small hole into the now thinned portion of the iris. As you can see, the procedure is relatively quick. Patients usually return to normal activities just after the laser. They use some anti-inflammatory drops for a few days. The procedure is a better than 99% success rate, has a less than 1% chance of inflammation or pressure. Uh, going up in the eye, which is usually short-lived. Sometimes dry eye is aggravated a little bit by the uh, procedure, but usually goes away quickly. The procedure is safe and effective and certainly easier to do on a non-emergent basis.